Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nursing Uncharted. I'm your host, Maggie Reichardt, and thank you for coming to tune in with us this week again. If you're here for the first time, thank you so much for checking us out and spending your time with us today. And if you've listened before, welcome back. We're so happy to have you here. And we are moving right along through 2022. And I want to know some topics that are of interest to you so that we can continue to tailor our episodes to what you want to listen to. So let us know, please let us know what you, we should talk about or who we should talk to by DMing us on Instagram at Nursing Uncharted. So this episode, we are talking about life. We are talking about inpatient postpartum nursing. We're talking about work-life balance and handling debt after college, something that we all, most of us have struggled with. Um, and so I'm talking to a woman that has done this all on her YouTube channel, and her name is Amanda Rookty. So Amanda is a postpartum nurse who shares her journey through nursing school to the struggles of being a new nurse and navigating night shift, all on her YouTube channel, Amanda Lynn, L-Y-N-N. -N. She also shares her triumphs and struggles with paying off student loan debt and highlights na navigating life's milestones while balancing nursing and content creation on YouTube. And Instagram. So you can find Amanda on Instagram at amanda.the.nurse, or you can check out her YouTube channel at Amanda Lynn. So Amanda, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> I know. This is awesome. You know, I was actually just, um, I was watching some of your, your recent YouTube videos and I watched the 2022 reset yeah. and like some of your goals and it was like, try a new thing for January. And I was like, I wonder if she's ever done a podcast before. Maybe I did a podcast like two years ago, like pre COVID. And I'm like, pretty sure we did it on zoom before zoom was yeah. like a thing. So <laughs> I've, I've done it before. But oh man, I was hoping to take know, that, that would check be cool. that it's off been, your it's list. It's been a while. We can just count this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Something new this year. Something yeah. you probably yeah. won't do. Well, let's talk about postpartum nursing first, kind of just, you know, strategically like do the podcast about the nursing spectrum and then yeah. we can go into like YouTube and, and all of that. So postpartum nursing. So how long have you, did you start out doing that? Yeah. So I graduated in May of 2019 and I started working in July of 2019. Um, and I started right into postpartum. I was like very shocked to get the job because I had zero clinical experience. I just shadowed, um, someone that I knew, on the unit that I work on now, I shadowed her and like that was about the only experience that I got, but I knew that I really liked women's health and working with kids and babies. I've always loved babies. And awesome. so I kind of like got the job and I was like so shocked. Um, at the time they were like expanding, so like they were pretty much hiring anyone like who was qualified to work there so yeah since we all feel like that i feel like as new nurses you're like you want me like you i sure? know nothing okay <laughs> are you I have, sure i have no experience but all right <laughs> i don't have this badge i don't know what it actually means but i'm willing to learn i did some school <laughs> yeah right yeah so since july of 2019 so two and a half years now Awesome. Cool. And how do you, do you still like it? Do you feel like you want to expand into something else or? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I love it. I like me and my coworkers talk all the time about like, like obviously we get burned out with like COVID stuff, but we have COVID patients very rarely and we're just all, mm -hmm. all the time True. like, oh my God, I cannot imagine like all the like med surge and ICU nurses and everyone who's like dealing with COVID like daily, like we we're burnt out, but not quite as everyone else. So I think yeah. it has like a positive aspect to it. A lot of the times that helps make it yeah. easier. I feel like you guys like get like secondary like issues from the pandemic, like low yeah. staffing or like low yeah. resources or. Yep. Uh, Losing everyone to traveling. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, trying to do something else. Yeah. Well, let's walk through kind of your, I mean, postpartum nursing is such a niche, like as women's health is too. So like walk me through what a typical day looks like and yeah, like how you set up your day, like how many patients you have, all of that. Yeah. So, um, 
my hospital, we are like the biggest uh, birthing center in Wisconsin. Um, we average, I think, January, I think 2021, we had like 5,000 births in the entire year, which is wild. Wow. Um, last year, we broke our record twice for the number of births in a month. So we are very, or big. We yeah. have like a lot of high risk patients. Um, so our ratios are three couplets to one nurse. So like two, like three mom baby groups okay. to a nurse. Sometimes we have NICU moms that kind of depending on what's going on, but generally it's three. Um, so okay. start my day, um, kind of getting organized like everyone does. Um, we do still vitals and assessments on everyone mm -hmm. and, um, not a ton of meds that we pass, usually just like ibuprofen sure. and a stool softener, nothing too crazy. Um, yeah. But a lot of what we do is education on taking care of a baby and like breastfeeding or however feeding they decide to do, um, doing like tasks and stuff and like being like sometimes like especially on day shift it's like being like a secretary like this doctor sure. wants to go in and this doctor go on, wants to go in and the lactation wants to go in but they also want a nap and like have to feed their baby and mm -hmm. it's just a lot going on <laughs> how do you what what do the actual assessments look like like what do you normally what are, what are you looking for so we do vitals on moms um then it's kind of like more of a focus assessment. Um, if they're like mm -hmm. a C-section, we'll still do like heart okay. and lung sounds, just to make sure everything's looking good. Um, we'll do mm -hmm. like the fundal check. That's probably the biggest difference. Um, what is the, how do you do a fundal check? So the uterus, when uh, someone is like fully pregnant, like 40 weeks or whatever, like it's all the way up under your like breast, like rib cage. And when mm -hmm. you deliver, it shrinks back down, but it takes a while to shrink back down. So usually it's like right at the belly button. That's how you measure it. Um, okay. so it's kind of just like, uh, sometimes gentle depends on how like posterior it is or, um, so it kind of mm -hmm. just like a check to make sure that it's like firm where it's supposed to be. It's not like to the side, which could mean that their water's full. Um, so yeah, we measure okay. it based off of the umbilicus. So like one, one mm -hmm. above would be like a centimeter above one below so okay and it's like a feet like you feel for it essentially like where yeah. the firmness is yep mm. yeah and it that was something that definitely took me a while to like learn because yeah. like i said i had no clinical experience with it so it was just kind of just going out and like just touching everyone's stomach and yeah especially in c-sections like it can be painful it's not comfortable for someone to like po push into your stomach but yeah it's been something to learn um that's really interesting because I feel like there's not a whole lot of assessments nowadays that you really have to palpate for mm -hmm. other than like, I don't know, sometimes we'll palpate for like air, like up here, like yeah. subcutaneous air or something. But like most of the time it's like auscultate or imaging or, you know, yeah. it's like a very like skill driven yeah. like, Thing. It's That's definitely something that takes time to learn. And like, yeah, what we don't want is called like a boggy uterus, which to me, mm -hmm. that feels like, like to me, I think of the word jello when I think of like bogginess, <laughs> like it's like there, but it's just like not hard. But mm -hmm. like, I've only ever really felt one in my lifetime working as a nurse so far. And it's literally just like not there. Like it, mm -hmm. like you push and there's nothing there. And eventually the more you push, it starts to like harden up and then you can feel it. So I've only had one true time that I like felt a boggy uterus and I didn't yeah, really know like, what to expect. This, I was like, there's is nothing it? there. And someone's like, yeah, that's like, what that is. I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I feel like I just felt something boggy the other day, like an elbow or something. I was like, this is what boggy is. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like you have I'm to never... understand. You have to like feel it and experience it's it. It's just to a be very like, oh, like right. Yeah, like swollen but not hard. Like more mushy, but like yeah. a, like it was like a big like I don't know thing on this guy's yeah. elbow, and I was like, this is boggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, what other are there like abnormal? Like, what's an abnormal? assessment i guess other than like fundal fun, um fundal checks uh i mean so like with c-sections we'll look at the like 
dressing and the incision and stuff. So like yeah. any like incisional stuff, but that's like the same with like any like surgical thing. Like, yeah, you know, when an incision yeah. looks good and when it doesn't. Yeah. Um, for like vaginal deliveries, we usually look at their bottoms. Um, usually it's swollen mm-hmm. and doesn't look super nice. So like, that's pretty normal. The only thing that's really abnormal is like a hematoma, which sure. aren't super common, but can unfortunately happen. But gotcha. other than that, I feel like the biggest, like, thing that happens in postpartum and, like, the labor that, like, we deal with a lot is, like, uh, hypertensive disorders, like gestational hypertension mm-hmm. or preeclampsia. Yeah. Gotcha. But usually we know that ahead of time. It's not something we just, like, discover in the assessment. Sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, they probably were dealing with it, like, pre- before and like during yeah. delivery and all of that. So when they come yeah. to you, it's like, okay, this is known. This is how we're treating it. Yes. Usually. Do you, Not have to, do you normally have to, um, like how local is like the rest of women's health? Like, do you ever have to float to like in delivery or? Um, so our hospital, we have like different like towers basically. So the whole North wing is all women's health. So three is half NICU, half like antepartum. So people who are still pregnant, who aren't ready to like deliver yet, who are dealing with stuff. And then four, the fourth floor is labor and delivery. And then five and six are postpartum. And then the seventh floor is a NICU as well. So I do five and six, which is postpartum. Um, I can be floated to do recoveries on labor and delivery. So after they've delivered like the last like two hours before they would move up to postpartum but that doesn't happen super often um but then there are a handful of nurses who are trained to like postpartum and NICU and then postpartum and labor and delivery okay okay gotcha man I <laughs> the only times that I uh passed out in nursing school was women's health and <laughs> it was in a c-section and then another one in a circumcision and yeah, cir- circumcisions like, can be rough to watch sometimes, but yeah, I watched one C-section I, and I was just like, cause they literally like <laughs> these two, like small female doctors were like up on <laughs> stools, one on each side, like pulling with all of their might to like, and I was just like, that's oh. why their stomach is sore after they deliver. Like, uh, right. It's if you wild. watch any kind of surgeries, I'm like, oh, this is like, <laughs> I have never actually pictured what a surgery would look like. Like, yes, you're manipulating the human body. Yeah, and they like take everything out and yep. Crazy. I think that's why I passed out because I was like, I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, I think I liked it. I mean, in the beginning, I remember seeing the OB or, you know, like they were using cautery and they were like cutting through and the nurse was like right up there like telling him where to go and I was like oh this is really cool like she's right yeah. up there like they're working together like maybe this is something that they want to do and then they were like clear and then they like pulled the baby out and I immediately felt my blood pressure like oh, drop no. to my knees oh. and I was like moving around the OR like moving my legs <laughs> but I knew that I was gonna pass out I like told my other nursing friend I was like hey I'm I'm gonna pass out I have to leave <laughs> she's like Aww. okay but, yeah and I left the OR and I just like freaking You're yeah like, that's not out for me so hard <laughs> yeah yeah I was like maybe not maybe not uh c-section for the OR no but um but yeah, circumcisions were, it was also, it was just like, I remember it just being like a very medieval looking like thing mm-hmm. that yep. <laughs> I was like, I, I literally can't remember it because half of it I pass out in. So yeah, it's, it's like, I want, I feel like now that I've seen a lot of them, like, I'm just like, whatever, like kind of immune yeah. to it. But like the first few times you're like, oh, oh, okay. That's what you're doing. All right. <laughs> yeah, All right. Like, I'm just going to sit here and not watch <laughs> Yeah, right. Oh, the poor babies. We want to take a quick break from this episode to talk about the industry leader in travel nurse staffing, American Mobile. Combining the largest network of facilities and providers in the country with top-level benefits like higher earning potential, premium health insurance, and 401k matching, American Mobile puts you in the driver's seat of your travel nursing career. Make sure to visit AmericanMobile.com today to discover a world of adventure with American Mobile. That's AmericanMobile.com, the first step towards your next travel nursing adventure. 
you were talking about briefly, like how education is such a, you know, important part of postpartum. Yeah. What are some of the, and lactation consulting, you know, what are some of the most like rewarding things for you guys as the postpartum nurses to like educate on, or what's the most exciting for you? Yeah. Um, I feel like the like most rewarding thing and like the thing that's like, oh, I like did a good job is like when you have like a family for like multiple days in a row and the first day you have them that they like don't even really know how to like pick up their baby or like do diaper changes and like feedings are just like not going well. And like as you progress through them, like you send them home and they're like doing everything by themselves and you're like, you send them home and you know that they're like going to be totally successful at home. So I think that that's like one of the most rewarding things and yeah. seeing when people just like kind of understand it and like they have that moment they're like oh okay I understand so that's awesome yeah that's my favorite part do you see like it does is it normally like mom and dad are both like you know ready to go like hands mm -hmm. on or does Sometimes it take a little dads bit longer have like <laughs> We, um, me and most of my coworkers always like complain about when we have dads who just like, you're like, why are you here? Like you were sleeping <laughs> on the couch the entire time. Like you're not even like wincing when the baby's screaming and like the mom like is doing everything by them. Like it's so frustrating sometimes, yeah. but when the dads are like, like the normal amount of helpful you would expect them to be, then we're always like, yay, a dad that's <laughs> helpful. Go Glen Coco. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I can imagine. I've seen like things on TikTok before where dads, so like, it's like things that your husband has told you like during labor or after or something. They're and terrible. he's like, I'm going to go to the cafeteria or something. <laughs> it's like, I need you right now here. It's like, yeah, we did this together. <laughs> it's not just me. I did <laughs> yeah, the hard like, work already. I grew yes. the child. Right. Yeah. Like, no, it's your turn. Right. I did see on your, one of your YouTube videos, you were talking about lactation consulting or like becoming certified. Yeah. Are you still like thinking it's about a goal. that? It's in it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's like, um, there's two like types of lactation, like certification. There's to be like a CLC, which is just like mm -hmm. a lactation counselor. So it's like one step down. And then there's an IBCLC, which is like an international, like lactation consultant so my hospital yeah. has uh ibclcs who work and they round and they see every patient which is really awesome um but like that's like two more like certifications on top of everything and like our mm. our hospital is unionized so like we don't get paid more for having these like certifications like you just get what you are at and so yes. it's kind of like i have to i want to do it eventually because i like love breastfeeding and lactation. And I think it's really cool and mm -hmm. something on my, it's one of my goals for 2022 yeah. is to oh, get awesome. that. And I have plenty of time. Yeah, for sure. Is that something? So you like, what do you educate moms on that the lactation consultant do, like, you know, what do the nurses do and what do the lactation consultants do? Yeah, so the nurses are there 24-7, lactation's only mm -hmm. there during the day, and they only are there for, like, a feeding. So they sure. can be there, and they have the time to, like, sit through and answer some of the questions that we might not know the answers to, but, like, everyone at my hospital is required to do, like, a 20-hour, like, breastfeeding education class, and, like, cool. from what... From my experience, like the more I've done and like helped, the more I've learned and like been able to educate myself on too. So I feel like it's important for like all postpartum patients, like that they know that like the nurses are there too. Like it's not just the um, lactation consultants that like know what they're talking about. Like we all know what yeah. we're talking about. Right. Cause I mean, that's so true for so many different specialties. It's like they're there for. 15 to 30 minutes maybe to like educate this thing and then like they leave and the rest of the questions and the re reiteration of the education is yeah. on the nurse so like you have to know you know like i'm thinking about nutrition like when somebody's you know like they need enter boosts with every meal like okay like you have to you know motivate the patient to like take those things yeah, <laughs> because definitely. the nutritionist is not going to be there well same with like doctors like the doctors are there for 10 minutes a day like for each patient yeah, like we're that. there all the time right yeah you're always yeah you have to carry out the plan 
whatever the plan is, like yep. and especially with like PTOT, I have a surgical background. And so like, you know, that kind of like getting up and moving and doing the exercises that the PTOT like recommended. I mean, that's yeah. all stuff that you have to like continue way past there when they stop seeing you. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. They don't always listen though. Yeah, right. They're like, oh, those bands. I'm not going to use those bands. <laughs> oh, later, later. I'll do it later. <laughs> what do you think is some of the most, like, difficult things about your job? Or, you know, frustrating or, yeah, just difficult things yeah. about postpartum? Um, there's, like, a few kind of situations that can be really frustrating. The first one is, like, not not even, like, frustrating, but just, like, hard situations is the first one is like dealing with like kiddos who are withdrawing. Um, so if their mm. moms either used like any drug or even were on like methadone or suboxone or subutex or anything like to like combat their addiction, um, baby still withdraw from that. And usually, usually it's a pretty okay situation. Like I feel like most of the situations I've had, the moms were like actively like trying to stop. So they were on like mm -hmm. subutex or whatever. So they were like interested in stopping, but there's been times where it's like, this is her like sixth kid and she has enough custody of anyone else. And it's like really frustrating to have that. And then have like a family who like, it's like they're like fifth time that they've been pregnant, but they haven't had any like successful, like actually like live births and their babies in the NICU. And they've like, all they want is to be a parent. And like, yeah. it's like so hard for them. So I think the two oh, like opposite imagine. spectrums of that can be really challenging. And then it doesn't happen very often, but anytime there's like a fetal demise or, um, we've even had yeah. a handful of maternal deaths, um, in the last like two years. So oh. those are like really tough situations because they're not frequent enough for us to like really come so to terms like, with them when they happen for sure well i mean and just being such a big women's health center you probably get like you said like the highest acuity place pa yep. patients and the you know most difficult yeah. things you probably see that more than other places in your area yeah mm, that's it what is with what is like baby what do babies withdrawing from narcotics and things and drugs like look like um, it's like, it is in some ways it can be similar to like adult withdrawing. Like I've had a handful of times where I've had to do like cows scoring on like moms, which is like the opioid withdrawal. And like mm. they, we used to like have this like huge, like number model that we used to like do, um, babies and calculate them on, but we've like shifted away from that. And like the numbers used to be like, if their temperature is elevated, if they're jittery, if they're like high like high tone if they're sneezing mm. or if they're like unable to settle and like stuff like that they're crawling now... out of the bed they're asking for beer <laughs> <laughs> right but now just from the adult side you know <laughs> they just can't really do that but like there's like things <laughs> yeah. that we like they would do that you know like and if they scored like a 12 or above or something then it was like they go to the NICU but now it's like there's three things. Can they eat? Can they sleep? Are they consolable in 10 minutes? And like, if you answer mm. no to any of those, then we are able to like, do like a huddle with like the NICU and the pediatricians and the mom and the parents and be like, okay, like, is this something that we feel like is like a short-term thing? Is this something that we've even, we're even able to give like a tiny bit of morphine to the babies on mm. the postpartum unit now? Um, that's something newer for us. But the goal with that is to like keep the parents and the baby together because that's like the best thing for the baby. Right. Usually. Gotcha. Yeah. What, what like treatments are there for babies going through withdrawal? Is it, is there usually just morphine? Time? Okay. Yep. Yeah, really small doses of morphine that they're able to like wean them off of. So gotcha. like they, instead of like going from like having whatever mom's on constantly to like being born and like, kind of like a shock to their system, just like complete stopping of what their body was used to getting. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. That's wild. Cause I can't imagine cause babies drop weight really quickly, right? Oh, yeah. Like in the first like few days and then like on top of that, like, oh, I'm not going to eat because I'm so uncomfortable because I'm yeah. like in this But I'm also like my body's in overdrive because I'm withdrawing. So I'm also burning calories from that. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of weight loss issues usually with those kiddos. So yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's tough. They always stay yeah. at least five days. 
Mm. They have, like, oh, a longer sure, stay just because, like, day three or four is usually when the, like, peak of their withdrawal would be. Gotcha, gotcha. Man. Yeah. That's it's fun. not all sunshine and rainbows all the time. Yeah, right. Well, luckily, those are probably, you know, less common cases yeah, than, definitely. than you're, like, your general population of people that are, like, excited and, Yes, you know. usually, usually it's happy. Yeah. Have you ever, like, caught something, like on like from a bait like something that was going on with the baby like after in the postpartum Um, i don't think i have um one story that i have is like not something that i was like there but i like helped the nurse out with the situation was she was like a brand new nurse like right off orientation and she was like oh you know this baby hasn't pooped for a while like hasn't pooped yet it was like over 24 hours old we usually expect them to poop at least once in the first 24 hours Mm. and she was like i want to try and do like a rectal temperature because sometimes with like the stimulation and stuff um Mm. it can like make them poop but she's like i can't really like find his butthole and I was like, what? <laughs> so I like go into the room with her and this kiddo is like jaundiced, like yellow, distended. And I like, we turn him over and I look and like, just at a glance, it looks totally fine. And then we like, look more. We're like, oh my gosh, he does not have a pain anus. Like there is nothing there. So this kid got like, immediately sent to our bigger hospital in the area for like surgery and stuff so like it was a wild like wow this poor kid was probably so uncomfortable oh my gosh i can't and even um, i didn't even know that that was possible i've never i've never seen that happen before it's pretty rare i think but like wow it's like at a glance it looked totally normal like it looked like something was there and then you like look a little more and you're like oh no you're like oh you're totally right. There's like, nothing, yep, there's to nothing stick there. A temperature through. Wow, I bet that one nurse felt like so. <laughs> She's like, "Is this? I'm right, right? Yeah, like, right. It's like one here. of those situations where you're like, I think this is the situation, but I just need you to double check for me. <laughs> this is very odd. I just need to double check. Oh my gosh. Well, that is really cool. Oh, uh, I've never actually like delved into postpartum before, so it was re- it's really. Ex- like cool to hear all yeah. of the like it's the a whole different it's a whole it. different ball game it really yeah. is yeah well let's talk about kind of your debt free journey I know that you've like documented a lot of that over the last like year or so um, you know like where let's talk about like where you started um, you know when you started your debt free goal and what is it and maybe some tips for yeah. For, paying off stuff for new grads. Yeah. So nursing is my second degree. So I started college in 2014 um, and I wanted to be a doctor at first. And then I halfway through my like sophomore year, I was like, wait a second, why don't I be a nurse? Like I was a CNA in high school, kind of like this weird moment where all of a sudden I was like, why, why don't I be a nurse? Like that makes so much more sense. (laughs) Um, And then I didn't get into nursing school right away. So it was like my junior year and I, decided to just like finish up my degree. I got it in human development and family studies. And then I applied for an accelerated nursing program. So that was Mm -hmm. like a 12 month nursing program. That was like $45,000, not the cheapest. And it was a second degree. Mm -hmm. So you don't get much for like federal student loan aid. Um, Yeah. So yeah, I had like graduated with I think like a hundred and sixteen hundred and I think my like refinanced loan was like a hundred and fourteen thousand. Um, so I graduated with that total for both of my degrees and then right out of graduating, I also needed a new car because mine stopped working and got a car loan on top of that. So never just one thing. It's like, it was, oh, and this. It and like this. it was rough. <laughs> I was like, I don't <laughs> want to buy this car right now, but I need to because otherwise I can't get to my job. Yeah. Um so yeah, I was like probably like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars when I really like started my journey. Um in like January of twenty twenty. I was like, okay, I need to like figure out a way to pay this off fast because I'm not loving this $1,200 a month student loan payment and I'm not loving this $300 a month car payment. Like it's a lot of money that I'm losing every month. So I like looked on the internet and 
found like Dave Ramsey, who is this Mm -hmm. like financial debt free person who at the time was like pretty much the only thing I could find. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to just do what he's saying, which is basically put every extra penny you have in your life towards your debt and pay it off as fast as you can. And Mm -hmm. I don't like a hundred percent agree with that now, like in hindsight, like I think I like Mm -hmm. restricted myself on spending a little too much, but Mm -hmm. I had like the ideas and got me, I paid off my car in like 18 months or 16 months or something like that. So I don't have car payments anymore. I paid off like, I think I'm at like 80 something thousand for my student debt now. So like I've paid off a lot in two years, but it was definitely like. You're just like nose to the grindstone. Yeah. 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 And my husband, Alex doesn't have any student debt and he just started his full-time job like earlier this year or last year. So eventually he'll be able to like help out, but yeah. yeah. It's... I've definitely heard other people do Dave Ramsey too. And yeah. I mean, you have to, cause you start out, you pay like the lowest loan first, right? Yeah. And then you, you pay just off. Like... Yep. It's like and the snowball. It into... Yeah. 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 So some people do it by like the, like amount of the loan because like once you pay off one, and I think that's meant for people who have like a bunch of like smaller loans versus I had just like two super big loans. So like, oh, okay. it's supposed to be yeah. motivating because if you pay off a thousand dollar loan and then like you <laughs> pay off the next one and then the next one. one. But I was like, I paid off my car and I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is really daunting now. Like this $90,000. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I understand where it works. I mean, you know, when you're just starting out too, and you don't have a lot of other things to pay for and like, it's good to just like dump, but like, you're also, you know, in the market for a house, I think. Right. So yeah. So that's all that's Dave Ramsey has his like baby steps where like you start with saving a thousand dollars for an emergency fund. And then step two is paying off all your debt. And then step three is like saving for a bigger emergency fund. And then like step four is like buying a house. So like in his steps, I should not Mm. be buying a house for like five more years. But like in reality, it's just not, it's just not, it's not for us. (laughs) Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. I mean, if, and many people, I mean, figure out their finances with like student loan debt is just where we live yeah. as a society. Like it's everybody has debt, you know? <laughs> yeah. So what other, um, what other kind of pearls, I guess, have you used for like saving money or just like working your way through maybe just goals or f- for people that are starting out with like a lot of debt as a new yeah. grad? So I think the biggest thing that has helped me is like budgeting and knowing where my money is going every month. So I use, Mm -hmm. um, it's called the every dollar app. It's by Dave Ramsey, but basically it's like mint stuff like that works similarly, but, um, you put in like how much you make, what you spend and just like keep track of it. And eventually you get to like the end of the month and you're like, okay, I have this much left over it's just good to know like where your money is going because there's people who like just spend and spend at target. And like, they're like, why don't I have any money? And it's like, well, if you're spending $500 a month at target on things you don't really need, it just kind of started holding me accountable. And obviously like I was able to pay off a lot of stuff at the beginning because of the pandemic. Like I didn't go anywhere. I didn't Mm. do anything. So every extra penny I had was just like, well, might as well put it here for right now. And (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. I feel like just being intentional, like being intentional about what you eat, like you can lose weight by just doing that or like being intentional about what you buy. Absolutely. Just then you automatically just buy less or you have more to like if you you have to write down every month what you're spending and where you're spending it, like Yeah. And you're like, Oh you're like, Oh, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't (laughs) spend thirty dollars a week on Starbucks, like yeah, we are big foodies, Matt and I are. I mean, we, well, we were, I mean, before like COVID and like moving, we kind of moved to like a s- outskirts, like suburb yeah. area that doesn't have as many good restaurants. But we used to be like spend so much money on like going to restaurants and stuff. And yeah, and like, I feel like it's okay to do those things if you like know what that you're doing it and you have like a limit on how much you're allowing yourself to do it. Like, I don't think yeah. you need to like completely cut off everything that makes you happy to like pay yeah. off your debt because you're going to be For miserable. Sure. Yeah. I think, I think that 
yeah, just like we said, like being intentional, like the world of Amazon too, right now, oh it's God, like it's just a click of a button. Oh, um, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. so like, oh, I could just get this right now. This one click. I could just it's like, get well, do this we need tomorrow. anything else too? I might as well like add things to the order so that like when we pay for shipping, like we're just paying for the shipping for multiple things. And yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so bad. I know, um, some of your YouTube videos are like you budget for the month and like yep. you have a monthly planner that you go through everything. I really, I really love that routine or like making that, a you know, priority to like reset every month and like figure it out for every month. I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. I think it helps to take it like one month at a time too. Like I don't mm -hmm. need to know what I'm going to spend in April, but like, I need to know where I'm at with things for the upcoming month. And like, I think it just helps too at the end of each month, like making sure I'm still on track with my goals and like making sure that I'm headed in the right direction if I'm not, or like make sure I restart if I need to like restart something. But yeah, yeah, I really yeah. liked doing those. <laughs> They're really there. I mean, I think it's a great way to start the month. Like, okay, these are going to be my big purchases or the ones that I foresee. And you know, that just makes you intentional again, like to figure out like, okay, I have this amount that I need to, I'm going to end up spending. So when I go to target, like that's like in the back of my mind, like, yeah. oh, maybe I won't pick up this, like, mm -hmm. you know, mug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Target is a friggin' it's black rough. hole, man. It it's... is. I was there today. I was there today. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes it's good to just walk through Target and just like, just look. It's okay. Yeah. You don't have to buy things. Yeah, just admiring <laughs> what Target has to offer nowadays. I'm like, oh, it just suits. is always changing go, go. and it's always great. Yeah. <laughs> Target's go dangerous. For Target. <laughs> It's dangerous. Well, are there any other apps? You said the easy... Every dollar. Every dollar. Is there, yeah. Are there any other like good financial apps that you use or websites? Um, I've heard of like Mint being a good one. I've never used I've it, used, but... I've used Mint. I think I... I Well, I don't really keep track of it, but I does because I would, would get annoyed. I was like, you spent more than you were supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay. But, or like if you, if there's a purchase that it doesn't recognize, then it kind of puts it in this like uncategorized, um, area and you have to go in and be like, oh, that was yeah food lion or, you know, whatever. And so you ha kind of have to keep up with it, but it is a good budgeting app. And I think it gives you your credit score every so often and yeah. it keeps track of all of that. Yeah, I use Excel spreadsheets sometimes too for like savings mm -hmm. goals and stuff. Like just like every month, like putting it in or like for like my me and Alex, we have a joint account that we use for like rent and electricity and all the like cool. household things. But then we still have our separate like accounts. So for our like joint account, I use just Excel to like make sure we're on track with that and we're putting in enough every month to like cover all of our expenses. Gotcha. Yeah, I still have to. We still have to figure all of that stuff out. We want to have, we kind of have a joint account that we did for our wedding, but, and, but like divvying things up to like put it into the joint account. I think we still have to figure out because most of everything still goes in like our individual accounts right now. Yeah. We wanted to do like four accounts, like have like individual accounts and then one joint account and then maybe like a savings. Yeah, that's what we have. What we have, gonna... we each have a checking. I have a savings too, but. I'm closing it eventually. And then we have like a joint checking and a joint savings. So we each put like, I calculated out like how much we spend every month on like everything, like going out to eat groceries, all the things, Netflix, Hulu, all the subscriptions mm -hmm. and everything. And then just divide that by two with like room for a little more just in case. And then split that up. And like, we each just transfer there, that there every month. Like as long as it's there, everything's worked out so far. You know, an app that I had just, um, got recently that takes care of your different bills is Truebill. Have you heard of Truebill? I haven't. It actually was really, so it, it, it finds all of your subscriptions like, and I don't know, and I don't remember how it does this. Maybe it's just like attached to your phone number or email or whatever, but it's like you subscribe to Audible. Do you really want that subscription? <laughs> 
And I would be like, oh, I ne- I completely forgot about that subscription. Yeah. And it will contact the company and like cancel. unsubscribe. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, cancel your subscription for you. Because I think the whole method of that app was to be like, you don't even know where you're spending money or right. you're, and then you, you know. So I think there was like one or two subscriptions where I was like, oh, wow. I think it was like a home workout mm-hmm. subscription that I didn't even know that I was still like paying to. for that yeah. true bill, like pointed out for me. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was a good one. I want to talk about kind of just like work-life balance because you talk about a lot of like day in the life stuff as a nurse on your YouTube channel. Um, what do you think? I, one thing that I really liked from your channel was like you setting goals and the fact that you have like monthly goals and your yearly goals. I mean, that kind of stuff, like resetting, I mean, do you have kind of like healthy lifestyle habits like that, that help you kind of have a fostering a healthy lifestyle? Yeah. I mean, I try, I feel like everyone tries to have like a healthy lifestyle. And I think, um, for me, it's kind of just a way to like like take a moment at the end of every month and be like, okay, like this is what went well. This is what didn't went, go well because like not every month is perfect. And it kind of breaks yeah. the year up into smaller segments. and makes it like seem more achievable. Mm-hmm. And I feel like everyone kind of has their own way of like creating goals. And like some people like actually like sit down and write them out. And some people just kind of have them always like in the back of their mind. So I think in terms of like, that. I don't know. It's just, it's what I, I like to do, do. I think you do a really good job of like giving yourself space to like not complete goals or just like be realistic about it. Like, yeah, like not every month is the same or, yeah. you know, I think that you are a really good like reflection of just the normal person that is like, okay, I made all of these goals. Some of them I didn't do, but some of them I did really well. And yeah. I think yeah, I pointed well, especially out this month. Like too. I had the goal of like going on a walk at least once or something, but it's been like negative three degrees every day. And I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going outside. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, just to check it mm-hmm. off. Let's, we don't need to do that. It's okay. What are some happen. of your, what are some of your goals, I guess, for for the whole year for the year oh geez um um, well one of the biggest ones is buying a house which hopefully Mm. is happening soon um another one was like the try a new thing every month getting Mm. my like uh clc uh i made 22 of them so i there's a lot i think just like (laughs) i think one of the things too is just like being more intentional with my time and like not spending hours of watching netflix which honestly has mm-hmm. not been great this month because i've been quarantined so <laughs> yeah i have well, watched you know, a lot of netflix well recently but there's not much else i can do i've kind of done everything so yeah yeah i think it's I important to with... give give yourself space for that stuff so for sure yeah give yourself grace be kind to yourself you know like not everything is going to happen the way that you originally planned oh, yeah. all out to happen absolutely I, after watching, actually just, I was watching one of your videos yesterday and last night I was like thinking about how I don't have enough time in the day. And I'm like, I probably do. Like, I don't have to quit on sleep in order to do everything that I need to do. It's just, I need to like cut the fat of like the unhealthy habits that I have, like Instagram and Facebook, Mm -hmm. just like spending a bunch of time or like TikTok is just a bottomless vortex. (laughs) And I think that one of my goals is going to be to inactivate my social media accounts for a little bit and just, or just like my personal ones and see how much time I gain back. Yeah. Because I think that, yeah. One thing I've done too in the past is you can like set limits for like certain apps on your phone, especially <laughs> with an iPhone. So like at the, like, it's like, okay, I hit the limit. You can like, uh, you can like say, okay, cancel. But like, I think yeah. it's good. Cause you're like, oh, what? I was already on there for like two hours today. Like, oh geez. It's just like, doesn't feel like it. So yeah, I've done that in the past and that's been helpful to like keep me accountable for not scrolling yeah. endlessly. I think it's, 
Yeah, it's um, maybe it's good to just have like little breaks and just like see how much time I could actually have doing something else. Like yeah. I want to, I know like one of your goals was like to move your body more, yeah. I think. And like, I also would like love to just, you know, instead of maybe being scrolling on Instagram, I can just like stretch, yeah. <laughs> like spend yeah. that time just like doing something like intentional and productive with my body instead of just sitting on like the couch, yep. sitting on the couch. But looking sometimes at other it's okay to sit on the couch. Yeah. Oh, TikTok <laughs> is going to be the hardest thing to get rid of. Mm -hmm. I love TikTok. <laughs> I think when I had like the social media, like when I like was like limiting my hours, I don't think I included TikTok in that. It was like Facebook <laughs> and Instagram that was, it was like, limited. But TikTok can stay. That could stay. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, how long have you, how long have you had your YouTube channel for? Wow. I started making music videos on YouTube when I was in like late middle school, early high school. A few That's of them amazing. are still public. Most of them are private now. Um, well, now we got to watch them. So. <laughs> they, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're middle nostalgic. School. It's fine. Yeah, that was like, a big be thing on YouTube yourself. though back then was like, just music videos. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I just have always You're loved so like right. editing and taking pictures and stuff. And then like summer of my, in between my like freshman and sophomore year of college, I like, so wanted to like start uploading again. So I uploaded for a summer and then I moved and it just like didn't work with school. And then once I found out I got into nursing school, I've always been someone that like, when something's happening to me, I look it up on YouTube. I want to see who else is going through it. I want to like, see other people's like experiences with it and there yeah. was like a lot for people in nursing school but there was like nothing for like accelerated nursing programs and sure. i was like well it's kind of the same but it is different mm -hmm. so that's kind of what made me start back in like march i think of like 2018 and since okay. then i've been going strong so that's awesome yeah. what would you use to post like from nursing school um, just like, I used to only do like one video a week. So just be like how I study, like mm. a week in the life, a day in the life, like a morning routine, clinicals, just random things that I would see other people doing. And I was like, well, yeah, but like I can add this to it. So like, that's like the nice thing about YouTube is like, there's like ideas out there, but like you can always take mm -hmm. what someone else is doing and add on to it. Make it your own. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I like how vlogging is like a, I mean, it's just a journal of your whole life that you can look back on too. Yeah. It's so like there, like I've rewatched like my, like Alex proposing to me, like I have that like kind of videotaped and like a video oh. about that. And like, I've rewatched that a ton of times and just like, even just like going back and watching my nursing school vlogs and how like little I knew and how like <laughs> tiny and like small I was and just like didn't didn't really know what was going on and like even just like pre-COVID and like I've I filmed mm -hmm. like a weekend in my life like right when that switch from COVID was like oh this is something that's going to be short to like oh my god what is this like and like just <laughs> even re-watching that back I'm like I was so oblivious to what was going on like I just, wish I would have journaled like during that whole time I, so I could I go journaled. back and I see. had like a solid like I think I have like 18 pages just typed up from like beginning wow. of that March. And then I think I stopped sometime last year because I was like, okay, this is never ending. So I'm just it's like going to give up on it. But like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. It's, I'll come back here when it's over. I know. It's like, it's finally over. Not really. <laughs> it's just going to come in waves. I mean, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm hoping that the waves get smaller and smaller, but I yeah. think that they're always going to be there. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Well, I think that we have covered all of the topics that we wanted to cover as far as postpartum and goal setting and going through your dad and kind of life and all yeah, of the all topics today. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add or where can, again, we'll just run through where can everybody find you? Yeah. Um, I can't really think of anything that I need to add on to this. Thank you guys for having me and thinking of me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I said, I love your YouTube and I think that you're doing a lot of great stuff and just like a example of a, you know, regular nurse, just 
like living life and yeah. managing debt and going through the motions and milestones and yeah it's been awesome to watch you yeah thank you and so we can find you at amanda.v.nurse yep on instagram and then amanda lynn on youtube awesome okay well yeah. thanks so much amanda for yeah, coming on thank we'll you. talk to you soon bye bye that brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.